we're doing a video interview of Robert Madden, a member of the American Legion of Anderson Island, and uh, he's going to talk about why he joined, how he came about joining this service, and what he did, and how he got out. Okay. It's, it's yours. You're, you're recording? Yes. Okay. So, so what do you want to know first? <clears throat> what is your connection with Anderson Island, and when did you come, and why did you come? <clears throat> okay, well, when, um, when we retired uh, completely, um, uh, Dorothy is, uh, Dorothy, my wife, uh, is a pilot, and she had um, uh, flown in this area, and uh, she said, boy, we retired, this is the place to come to. And uh, we had originally found a piece of property over at Lake Limerick. And, um, but in, in the meantime, while we were figuring what we were going to build, we, um, uh, there was a family reunion up this way. And her niece, uh, when I just casually mentioned that, yeah, we were coming up here, but Dorothy would really like to live on an island. She says, uh, this is, I, I know just the place. So she told, uh, told us about Anderson Island. We came over uh, one morning, talked to the real estate people, and went on, on our vacation in Vancouver Island. And uh, by the time we got back, we had bought this piece of property. So, uh, and that was some... Um, 19, uh, uh, yeah, but 20 years ago, it's February of 96. So that's why we're here and we love Paradise Island. Good, good. What prompted you to join the service and which branch of the service did you pick oh, it or did they pick you? Yeah, well, uh, I was in high school. 17 years of age when uh, the recruiters came around. Uh, I, th I think the Navy came around first and um, I, uh, because uh, there was the pending uh, Korean War, I thought, well, it's a good idea that I, I get in so the Army doesn't get me first. So uh, I joined the Naval Reserve. Um, uh, just just a month or so later, they started the Air Force. I would have rather have been in the, in the Air Force because I've always been interested in in aircraft. But um, <clears throat> I I did um, uh, because I was a Navy photographer. I uh, did um, uh, did end up on a uh, naval air base. Uh, NAS Miramar down by San Diego, but uh, um, all my photography was really ground photography and not aerial photography. Uh, uh, <clears throat> what more can I tell you, Ray? Uh, well, so you, you volunteered to get in? And, yes, and I volunteered to go in, okay. and um, uh, then uh, Truman extended uh, all um, all enlistments. I was supposed to get out, out on my 21st birthday, but um, uh, Truman extended the year, so I wasn't to get out until my 22nd birthday. So I thought that I was I was free and clear of serving, period. But um, just before my 22nd birthday, I got the, the greetings from the Navy, and I said, well, I'm, I'm due to get out. They said, well, that's, that's, that's fine. You'll be back in the draft. I said, okay, well, I'll go in. So I uh, went in uh, active duty in 52, I guess. And what kind of ground pictures did you take? Uh, <clears throat> well, I actually, I, I took very few ground pictures. I took some uh, portraits similar to the, uh, the, the one that was taken of me, um, uh, but uh, most of my work was uh, darkroom work, um, either 
uh, printing, uh, developing uh, film. Where did that film come from? Was it from... Where did the film come from? Mm -hmm. Oh, well, we, uh, I, I belong to a uh, uh, naval uh, uh, photographic squadron. Oh, I meant to bring my hat up if you want to see the insignia, but it's on, on the front of my hat. Um, and uh, so uh, uh, the pictures would come from uh, either uh, the uh, aerial photographs that they took or, uh, you know, any photographs that were taken on uh, the base at NAS Miramar. And were there any memorable events that while you were on duty, anything that really stuck to stick to your mind or what anything? Did you see some special pictures or you know? In um, uh, no, I, I I did go on um, on detachment to Panama, and uh, but before that, I I had been um, uh, uh, had the opportunity to. Uh, go to photo interpretation school at NES uh, uh, Alameda, and uh, because I had taken that, I, I, I went on on detachment to Panama, and uh, well maybe I can we uh, uh, in 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 Panama they they flew the uh, uh, PB4Y, which is the same as the B-24, but with the uh, single tail rather than the double tail that's on the Army um, <coughs> B-24. We, um, we also, um, well, I think I have a picture of an AJ here. We also flew AJs. And the interesting thing to me was that uh, the AJ uh, only took five in, in the crew, which meant that they either could take an, an electronics mate or take a photographer. Now, I, I, I would think that people would think that, uh, well, you know, it's, not easy, it's a lot easier to learn photography than it is, is electronics, but that was not the case. They, they trained uh, the photographers to uh, run the electronic uh, mm. um, equipment. I, <coughs> uh, like I say, I was on the uh, ground crew, so I flew very, uh, uh, very little. In fact, uh, uh, the only real, real flight I had is, is when I was on the, uh, on detachment in um, in Panama at uh, Coco Solo, uh, Panama Canal Zone, and while I was there, uh, this is what I did. Um, uh, <coughs> this was a picture that was on our uh, 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 newsletter that we brought out, and that's. That's me. Going with the head on. There, uh, they would go up. Um, uh, it, 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 it became quite a racket because the, the planes had to be up early. They got up at 5 o'clock in the morning, and as soon as it got, uh, got light, the planes would go up and take the aerial. F where, where did they go? Pardon? Where did the planes go to take the pictures? Oh, uh, they. <coughs> They were photographing the coasts of Panama and Colombia. Now, originally, uh, the and and I think it was the uh, uh, Panamanian government that uh, one of these pictures, and they they originally hired um, Union Oil to take the pictures, but. Um, in, in Panama, it gets quite overcast all the time. 
So uh, Union Oil finally said, uh, uh, this, this is not cost effective, we, <laughs> we can't do it. So somehow they got the Navy to do it. And the planes would go up at 5 o'clock and uh, the majority of times it, it would be overcast. Uh, we would get up at, you know, the regular time, 6, 7, 8 o'clock and report for duty, but uh, nine times out of ten they'd say, well, we didn't get any photos, so we either just went back to our barracks or we went on liberty, depending on what it was. Mm -hmm. um, but if, if the planes did um, get photographs, uh, this is what we did. We had to line up the flight line, the pictures to see what we had, how much was overcast and how much was not. Um, so what more can I tell you about that? <clears throat> Were there any memorable uh, fellow service members, good friends that you made during their your well, um, uh, actually, um, there was a fellow that I met uh, going to my reserve meetings once a week, and he and I became friends, and we were both called at the same time, both sent to uh, NAS Miramar, and uh, he was my buddy all along. He, he did not go to Panama with me. He had, he had married, uh, by the time we went to Panama, and he wanted to stay with his wife rather than go on detachment. Mm. But, um, uh, you know, otherwise there was nothing that... Uh, How long were you in Panama? Uh, uh, three months in Panama, three months. yes. Uh, while you were on active duty, uh, what was your family concerned about you, or what kind of support did you require from the family? Well, uh, the only family I had at that time was my mother and father, and they just, uh, you know, accepted that uh, the fact that we all had to go into service, and it was good that, uh, you know, I wasn't drafted. And you were in a safe place. Yeah, over <laughs> there in uh, Korea getting... Uh, shot at. In fact, that's that's an interesting point because I was in the reserve. I um, had to go on uh, uh, a monthly, or not monthly, uh, two-week cruises. And um, one of the cruises, we were out, uh, in, in, um, uh, I'm not quite sure, we were probably out in the de destroyer. And um, we were uh, advised that we had started shooting in Korea. And uh, so we, you know, of course, the rumors started going around that, well, uh, we, uh, you are now headed for Korea <laughs> on the destroyer. This was not true, but uh, 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 that was before I was on active duty. Uh, mm -hmm. What, what did you do while you were on the destroyer? Uh, a regular. Uh, <clears throat> I don't think I took took many pictures. I, I was, you know, a seaman, so I did. You know, scrub the decks and, you know, whatever that <laughs> you did as a apprentice seaman. <laughs> but uh, we also, it's my brother joined the reserve at the same time, so uh, we were able to, uh, one year, uh, double up our um, uh, uh, two-week cruises so that we took two weeks at the end of June and two weeks at the beginning of July, which covered two years, and we went to, uh, went to Ecuador, also on a destroyer. But, uh, I also spent two weeks on a uh, um, aircraft carrier, the Valley Forge. Um, but uh, and on the Valley Forge, I think I did some photographic uh, 
work. Took some illegal pictures of planes landing, but. Uh, if you had to do it all over again, would you do that? Would you have gone the same route? Uh, you mean join the navy? Yeah. Uh, well, it it depends on when I join. I I, I probably will have joined the air force if uh, because I've always mm. had an interest in airplanes. And as as you can see in this room, which is Dorothy's, there's lots of aircraft stuff because she was a pilot. But I. Uh, have always been interested in flying, though I could never afford to get a license like she was. But so you you feel you did the right thing at the time? Oh yes, I I you know I'm a firm believer that uh, uh, one should defend their country. I mean that's just a patriotic thing to do, and uh, you know no matter what. I want to join something. Hmm. Okay. Done my duty, but well, I guess this answers basically. Unless you have anything special that comes to mind, memorable, or and then I'll take some pictures of your pictures. Well, I th I, I think uh, the, uh, you know I just pulled these out. That uh, this is um, uh, this is Ennius Miramar uh, with. Uh, it, it it turned out to be the um, oh I forgot the name of it um, Top Gun base became my uh, Marine base, but at 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 the time the the base mainly had uh, oh, I'm I'm not sure which which plane it is, but uh, uh, that's that's mainly. It was a fighter base, but uh, otherwise, I don't know what I, you know. I didn't, I didn't have anything too, too exciting. I have, uh, you know, I printed out some stuff that, um, you know, that that tells about Coco Solo in uh, Panama, and. Um, uh, I guess one thing uh, that uh, did come out of it, that uh, the pictures that we took of Panama, of course, were uh, uh, used, uh, were quite, um, uh, what words do I want to use? Uh, the Navy was able, Navy, Army, Marines, etc., when uh, there was the upheaval in Panama shortly after uh, I left with what's his name, Riviera or Nortega or something. <laughs> but uh, otherwise, I, I mean, I ha had a very quiet time and enjoyable time because I've always enjoyed photography and uh, uh, wangled myself into uh, being a Navy photographer because. They never did uh, make me a PhD uh, seaman, SN. I was SN, just a plain old seaman, and at one time I was able to finagle the PhD in front of it, and uh, so that's what I went in. Uh, now, when were you working when before you went to active duty, and were you did you then have to quit your job and and re? Uh, After yes, three I, months, then what happened? You know, what, what, how did, because well, people would be interested in, you know, well, people I, that are in I the service. I was on active duty from uh, the beginning of uh, 1952 until um, I, uh, for 21 months. I mean, they let us out before Christmas. I, mm -hmm. I was due to get out in February. And I, but, uh, <coughs> But yes, I was working when I was called to uh, active duty, and um, I, I guess it's still true now that if someone is called to active duty, they have to leave the job open, which uh, they did while I was okay. gone for two years. But um, uh, the job that I was doing, which was a bookkeeper for a printing company, uh, they actually had 
gotten somebody and somehow phased me out shortly thereafter. But uh, so when you came back there, they... well, I went back to that job, but they, uh, I I don't know, they phased me out like I I, I get phased out all my life and uh, as as far as working I get myself a job and work myself up to middle management and you know, well, either let your, the people under you uh, take over or somebody above you. <coughs> that happened all my life. <laughs> I think that probably is the norm anywhere. Pardon? That is probably the norm yeah, in a I lot of places. So. I don't know. but. Uh, well, thank you for your service. Well, you're and very welcome. I, because everybody plays their part, and, and so I appreciate it. Uh, got any more questions? No, no.